This is a Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, this time around, we're going to look at Port Loop Detect. So Port Loop Detect is used in situations where uh, you can't run spanning tree or some other layer two loop prevention mechanism, or in situations where it's not going to work correctly. So for example, if you have two VLANs that are connected together uh, in a loop, per VLAN spanning tree is not going to pick that up because the BPDUs are sent on each VLAN and they are not going to see each other and shut those ports down. So port loop detect is going to send out a loop detect packet on one VLAN, receive it on the other, realize it's a loop and shut those ports down and, and catch that loop. So we see that's, that circumstance sometimes in voice over IP environments where somebody plugs two uh, connections into the back of a phone and it loops through, but they may be on different VLANs and per VLAN spanning tree doesn't catch that. So um, there's two ways to do uh, port loop detect. There's strict mode and loose mode. Strict mode is port based. So it means that you turn it on on the physical interface and it will only detect a loop uh, from the test packets going out and coming back in that same port. So it has limited functionality in my opinion. The other way is loose mode. So loose mo mode is turned on on a per VLAN basis. So it sends the test packets out all the ports in the VLAN and listens for it coming back in. So if, if any port in that VLAN gets the test packets back, even uh, if it's across VLANs, VLAN to VLAN, um, it'll, it'll shut those ports down and, and stop that loop from happening. So loose mode is what you're going to use almost always. The downside is loose mode, because it sends packets out all the ports in the VLAN, it's a little bit more taxing on the CPU. So if you have a lot of VLANs, you might have to be weary of that. But normally, you should be fine. So uh, to turn that on, we do that on a per VLAN basis. So on this switch, I have VLAN 1 and VLAN 20. So it's just a loop detection. Uh, same thing on VLAN 20. Let's switch is faster than I am. Okay, so it, it already picked up a loop uh, on port 1 slash 2 slash 2 VLAN 1 and put it into port error disable state. Um, so let's have a look at show uh, loop detect status. So we see one port in an error disable state in VLAN 1. Um, nothing in VLAN 20 yet. So what we're going to do, oh, and then we'll look at uh, disabled. So there's one port disabled, which is 1 slash 2 slash 2. It's caused by VLAN 1, and it's been disabled for 40 seconds. Um, so it's telling you here that there's three ways you can re-enable a port. You can go to the interface and do a disable enable. You can uh, do a clear loop detect and re-enable all the ports or you can have it automatically re-enable uh, on, uh, on a scheduled basis. So you do an error disable recovery cause loop detection, uh, which by default will, uh, will try to recover the ports every 300 seconds. Um, but you can set that to, the, to an error disable recovery interval in seconds to some other number. So if you wanted to try every you know, 60 seconds or something like that, you certainly can. But 300 seconds is usually fine. In most cases, the loop's not going to clear itself. So even if it tries every five minutes, it's, you know, it's probably there until someone manually uh, has some sort of intervention. Um, the other, the other thing you can change is the loop detection interval. So by default, um, it's going to send out a loop detect packet every second. Um, and, the, and the way you configure that is the, the loop detection interval can be set in 0.1 second intervals or, or tenth of a second. So if you set that the loop detection interval to 50, it's going to be 5 seconds or 50 tenths of a second um, to detect a loop. But 1 second is usually good. Again, if your CPU is getting taxed, you can set that to a higher interval rate, and, and that should be fine. Even if you, if you had a loop for 5 seconds, it's probably not going to affect production traffic. So raising that number a little bit will be fine. But by default, in most cases, the 1 second um, or, or 10 tenths of a second interval is quite... Um, uh, sufficient. So I'm just going to move a couple of other ports here and see if we can't get a few other ports to go into error disable state. So this should be uh, two ports. Yeah, so two ports are now disabled in VLAN 20. I created a loop between two ports in VLAN 20. 
Um, and the other port that's in VLAN 1, there's only one port because it's actually a loop between VLAN 20 and VLAN 1 out my 10 gig ports. Um, so we'll look at the disabled there. Uh, so let's say you have a circumstance where something is an uplink and you never want loop detect to disable it, right? So your edge ports are fine if it detects a loop out there, but your, your, your uplink ports, you certainly don't want to cut the whole switch off because there's a loop you know, between two switches or between an, an edge device that's connected between two switches or, or something like that. So what you want to do is go to that interface. So in this case, let's say I, I never want to shut down uh, 1 slash 2 slash 2, uh, which is currently disabled on VLAN 1. So maybe that's my uplink and I never want that to disable. So I can go to that physical interface, interface E 1 slash 2 slash 2, and I can do a uh, loop detection uh, shutdown dash disable and it will disable that port from ever being shut down so while I'm there because it's already error shutdown I'm or error disable state I'm going to disable and enable that port so that should bring it back up um, so now what's going to happen is if I show um, if we look at the status again Now I have three ports in VLAN 20 because I had a I had two ports, one in VLAN 20 and one in VLAN 1, which is 121 and 122, uh, that were that were looped together. And so instead of it shutting down um, that that VLAN 1 port, instead of it shutting down 1 slash 2 slash 2, um, I set that to, to no disable because it's my uplink. So automatically 1 slash 2 slash 1 gets disabled because it's it's not possible uh, to shut down the other one because I, I, I told it to not ever shut that down. So if we do a show log here, um, we are going to see those error disable states happening, right? Uh, there's one slash two slash one, put in error disable state. And then we can also see that from a show interface. So if I do a show interface, E one slash two slash one, uh, it tells me that this 10 gig port is error disabled because of loop detection and the line status is down. So I can either disable and, re and enable, I can clear loop detect, um, or I can set that, that um, the interval to have it uh, bring itself back up on a regular basis. Um, anyway, that's the basis of it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks.